careful of men who give you nice things and do nice things that are bad for you or that are like not at all about you. Huge red flag. Okay, I'm back at, I found this phone that has notes that I wrote to myself while I was in this crazy abusive relationship with this hobo, sexual vampire parasite dude who almost like ended my life but definitely like ruined it for a while. In this video, I'm going to talk about cooking and food trauma. Didn't know that was a thing. Now this man said out loud at some point, I'm going to fatten you up so no one else will want you. I kid you not. He actually said that. And I've said in before videos, he was so dumb. Like, great instincts, predator instincts. Always like five steps ahead of me. But he, well, maybe he's not dumb. Auda he was pretty stupid. Audacity. He just said this stuff out loud. I was like, I can't believe he just showed his card. He told me that he um, wanted to get me pregnant so I couldn't leave him. Literally admitted to trying to baby trap me. And then also admitted that he, he was the cook. <laughs> Y'all, I worked at a pizza place with him. And he was one of the cooks. Don't ever date a co-worker. It usually isn't going to end up well for you. That's literally one of the reasons why I stayed so long with him because I didn't know where to get another job and I didn't want to have to face him every day like in a breakup situation. So I was just like, okay. Anyway, he would cook me my, my free meal at the end of the night. Always just threw on extra cheese. Always feeding me brownies and cookies. Now, anyone who knows my past, I was like, um, for a long time. And I actually was in a really good place before I met this dude. So I'm so lucky I didn't relapse. But I definitely gained a lot of weight because he just kept feeding me stuff that I would never eat. Like, not that quantity, right? I mean, I, I, I really try to eat things that make me feel good. It's not about shame and like purity and food and stuff. It's just like, I react really bad to sugar. So this man, what did he do? Sugar, 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 sugar. Sugar. Okay, so for instance, okay? By the way, before I get into this, I love this little note like here. I like the, <laughs> the affection of being held more than anything. I'm gonna miss this. This is right before I left. This right here is why I stayed for so long probably. I have since learned pay a massage therapist to touch you. Literally, if you are touch starved, go get the cheapest massage you can find. Literally anything, pay someone to touch you because this isn't worth it. Anyway, look at this. Sorry for the misspellings, got in a dite fight over cupcakes <laughs> that he made for me, right? Even then I was like, this is not for me. I'm actually really proud of how insightful I was back then and didn't fall for this. I pretended like, a, oh, I think it. Not only did he work at this pizza place, he also had a second job at a coffee shop that sold like the craziest cupcakes ever. Like they must have, it was like a whole day's worth of caloric intake in half the cupcakes. So like it, there's, they're crazy how thick and rich these things are and big. He made a cupcake for me. Look at this. He's so selfish and he doesn't realize that he would rather me eat things that are bad for me to make himself feel better. Okay, this is where I am giving him too much credit. He absolutely realized this. One of the amazing things about healing and especially healing in community and learning from each other is that these men are very intentional. He knew exactly what he was doing. I can't, like, someone you love is supposed to support your healthy habits. Eating a cupcake every day and brownies and cookies every day when, when I'm very sensitive to sugar, it makes me sleepy. It makes it feel like someone is stabbing me in the stomach from all those years of bulimia, right? Like I am very sensitive to sugar now. I, I rarely eat it because it makes me feel so bad. And every day he was like, here you go. But this one right here, this scene like haunts me. I still think about this regularly. He wanted to cook me elk stew. <laughs> this is such a, a new Taos, New Mexico story. He wanted to cook, cook me elk stew so bad. Now, now I understand what this was really about. He literally would look for reasons to be the victim and like cause a fight. Cause men like this, they need drama and crazy making. Um, I was vegetarian, by the way. <laughs> like I never, I mean, I wasn't a strict vegetarian, but I just never ate meat. I didn't like it. it I'm also narcoleptic and meat and sugar Make me very sleepy. So I said yes because I didn't want to hurt his feelings. The way 
<laughs> the way a mom will eat a pile of Play-Doh cookies that her son is proud of. Okay. I didn't, like, I meant pretend eat. Obviously, moms are not going to eat. Do you know? Like, I was like, I feel like I there's so many references in my notes where I was like, okay, what would a mom do in this situation? She'd be like, mm, mm, this is good. I mean, you know, I've been a nanny. And I can't tell you how many, and I'm, I'm an aunt. Every time I hang out with my niece, who's not even three yet, she hands me the weirdest crap that's a snack. And I'm like, mm -hmm, yeah. That's what I do with the elks do. These men literally turn you into their mothers of toddlers but toddlers that can ruin your life and unalive you it's like being it's like chucky it's like dating this i'm not even joking Look at this that moment when i'm eating this awful stew and <laughs> it's awful stew i don't like and watching teenage mutant ninja turtles in my den right the apartment i'm paying everything for this was before he threw my tv at me and ruined the tv and the dvd player and pretending to like both of them. Never in a million years would I watch a movie like that. But because he's so selfish and he doesn't care why I don't like things or if I like them. He just cares about his ego being stroked. Honestly, that was one of my lowest moments. Was sitting there like forcing elk stew down my throat to avoid the baby from getting mad, you know. The pacify the baby. And I'm watching this. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now, I'm not judging anyone who likes that movie. But I was like 36 watching this movie. And I was like, oh yeah. Why are they... The rat is like the boss. These turtles high all the time. Well, all they want is pizza. Like I, like, I just remember I was high at the time. That's the other thing. He also got me to start smoking again. I haven't been a hmm, pothead since high school when I literally went to kid jail. Like, I wore like the, God, I think, I, I don't know if I've told you this story. I wore like the, you know, I got busted with a bunch of wound and I went to kid jail right before I turned 18, thank God. Mind you, if I was not a white girl, because this is the South especially, that one thing would have ruined my life, right? But I got a second chance because I'm a white girl. Been all summer on house arrest, a year on state probation, um, drunk tests regularly from my state probation officer. So three months on house arrest. Like he literally called me, are you home? Are you home? Yeah, I'm here, I'm here. And before all that, I, you know, was taken to kid jail, put in, you know, stripped of all my clothes, had to lean over, pull my jut butt cheeks apart, cough, so they could make sure I did not have weed up my butt. And they searched my hair, you know, all my orifices to make sure I didn't have room. And then I slept in jail by myself and in the, the uniform, the, the jumpsuit. And since then, I had not really smoked, right? Like on occasion, but I was like, I hate this stuff. And with this man, I was eating meat, sugar all the time. After like over a decade of like, bleh, from like, you know? And I am smoking after, I don't even like, I hate being high. I'm an overthinker already. I don't need anything that's gonna make me overanalyze anything. But the thing is, this man was so exhausting, I didn't overanalyze anything with him. I was just numb. And I'm sitting there watching high, watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, eating elk soup, but, and I'm like, this is the low point of my life. <laughs> I'm 36 years old. With this loser, literally a criminal. He's dumb as rocks. Predatory, predatory skills, but dumb. I caught him eating dog food once. Okay, I gotta do that on another video on that. I deserve better than, I just was like, how did I get here? I hooked up with my coworker. Don't hook up with a coworker. And since then, let's, let's fast forward, I don't know, what, 10 years or something? Oh, less than 10 years, seven years, eight years. When my husband asked, like cooks, he loves to feed me and nourish me. And he doesn't like me eating things that are that I don't want because I don't want to feel bad. There was one occasion where he tried to get me to try something. I'm in France, I can be very close-minded. And I was like, nah. He's like, come on, babe, I, I made this. Can you just try it? I'm like, no. And then I was like, don't tell me what to do. And he's like, whoa, 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 that's okay. The point being, this man not only gave me food issues all over again, me comatose with wrongs. He made me not trust gifts and nice things that men did for me. Careful, y'all. 